Hello, I'm Bob Moore, and this is our story about the World Altitude Record attempts for kites. At last, we've nearly reached our destination, Cable Downs, a 50,000 acre sheep station, 9 hours and 750 kilometres by road from Sydney. CASA, the Civil Aviation Safety Authority, has put us out here because it's free of air traffic. Cable Downs airstrip. It's about 1.2 kilometres long. We generally fly from the centre of the airstrip, although this image shows uh, dense scrub either side of the strip. It's now been cleared for some distance and uh, gives a much better flying zone. Mike Richards is the proprietor of Kite Magic, a diverse wind sports business in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. Roger Martin is a keen kite builder and flyer and also an enthusiastic fisherman. Bob Moore is the team leader of the high altitude kite attempts and Mick Jenkins is an enthusiastic kite flyer, builder and also a keen sailor. Here's Mike Richards on day one 2009. He's preparing the kite for launch. He's putting an instrument pack into a pouch on the back of the kite. Uh, in it is a GPS flight telemetry unit uh, plus a small Garmin unit. On the front of the kite is a strobe light. The kite is a DT Delta or Dunton Taylor Delta and is simply a Delta with a triangular box section. It's around about 11.5 square metres or 120 square feet in sail area. The winch has evolved over a seven year period in several versions. It's uh, driven by a one horsepower electric motor which is controlled by a Tico inverter. Power supply is from a five and a half kilowatt generator. It has a line speed of about 10 kilometers an hour and exerts about 300 pounds force. The 12 kilometers of line on the reel is braided from ultra high molecular weight polyethylene fiber similar to Dyneema and Spectra. It is extremely thin and strong and apart from wind is the most important factor in reaching record altitudes. The white line you can see is 410 pound braking strain line and is less than one millimetre thick. The total weight of the line is about seven kilograms or 15 pounds which is important but not as important as its thickness. To launch the kite we pull the line out at least 100 metres and up to 500 metres. The length depends on the ground wind speed. In 10 knot or above winds, the kite can be launched with a relatively short line. If there are only light winds, the kite needs to be towed into the wind on long lines. This gets the kite above 500 feet quickly to catch better breeze if it exists. Sometimes there isn't enough wind to keep the kite flying even above 1,000 feet. Occasionally, the wind drops at 4,000 feet stranding the kite over three kilometres away. We have a GPS telemetry unit on the kite which transmits altitude and positional data back to a receiver. The receiver is connected to a laptop and Mike Richards here is observing the laptop screen and calling out the altitude to the winch operator. 660, so it's stalling, 659. Yeah. I think we need to get it up. We continued on all day working the winch and gradually uh, it climbed and eventually reached over 9,000 feet. I think it was 9,119 feet above ground level. Again, However, it's a hot, a hard, and te tedious work. 700. Yeah, hold it there, Bobby. 800. 850. 900.
Yeah. Might get there by itself. Yeah, and I'm not, it's dropping, so. Funny place, Cable Downs, especially when you're trying to break a world record. It brings out strange people, but we've all got one thing in mind about trying to get 4.2 kilometres that way, which is a challenge. What we believe at the moment is that um, it's up to Mother Nature. We've got kites and everything else that seems to be working okay, so now it's the wind profile from here to there. And if we get it, I reckon we'll get the record. But, uh, today's been a struggle, but eh, it's okay. That's part of the challenge and uh, the patience is needed just to get to the point where we're going to break the world record. So we hold the Australian record, 10,500 feet, but uh, 15,000 feet plus would be great. So fingers crossed, tomorrow's another day and uh, if we get the wind, we'll be there. To achieve record altitudes, we have to have the right conditions. That is, enough wind at all altitudes throughout the flight. The minimum wind that will support the kite is 5 knots or just a little under 10 kilometers per hour. However, that is not enough for the kite to climb from ground level without winding some line in. When the kite is on the ground, lift is minimum and drag is at maximum. Maximum lift happens when the kite is flying at 50 to 60 degrees elevation from the tether point. The kite will lift off the ground with 7 knots wind speed and above. Ground wind is affected by friction, so often true or geotropic wind is over 300 feet above ground level. If the prevailing wind is not enough to sustain the kite, then there is little hope of sustaining flight beyond a few hundred feet. There is always hope that up there, just a few hundred feet higher, is wind good enough to catch the kite to have it soar out of sight. Often we try in vain. Another situation is the kite gets to three or four thousand feet then a layer of low wind or even calm air exists. This is where our experience, kite flying skills and winching skills can force the kite through this layer. It can require a great deal of time and patience to do this. Sometimes it is impossible because the low wind layer is too thick to negotiate. On this day the kite spent over three hours in the four thousand to six thousand feet range. Then it rose in a thermal to over 9,000 feet. However, thermals are not necessarily taxis to high altitudes and can leave the kite stranded at intermediate altitudes without any horizontal wind. In those conditions, the line can develop huge sag and lodge in trees. We will run the winch at, at its fastest, trying to reel the line and to re-establish kite control. This was a, the best day in 2009. The other days were plagued with rain and storms. In those conditions, this dusty land becomes mud. There was two other flights. One reached over 5,000 feet and another was to 2,200 feet with a camera. Here is the image which the camp, in which the campsite can be seen middle bottom. Also, a red and yellow del delta is flying at 500 feet. It has a 10 feet span. This is a screenshot of a Garmin GPS altitude profile and shows 9,732 feet above sea level or 9,100 feet above ground level. Our next year is 2010 and we achieved 10,466 feet above ground level but that's another story.